Rapid Films here. Today I'm going to explain a fantasy drama and horror show called Into the Dark Down. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. On the evening before Valentine's Day, Jennifer Robbins stays late in her office to compose an email for her ex-fiancé, Derek. She plans to fly out to New York to patch things up with him, but he does not know she is coming yet. Ultimately, she decides to go with her plan without sending the message. Before she leaves her office, she grabs a handful of chocolates and stuffs them in her bag. In a man's bathroom, a man named Guy preps himself as if getting ready for a date. As the last people to leave the building, Jennifer and Guy confidently get into the same elevator. Guy casually initiates small talk and Jennifer responds to him politely. In the middle of the conversation, Guy notices a stick man figure on the wall that's stuck in a box. Suddenly, the elevator shakes and stops. Jennifer immediately worries while Guy tries to use the emergency alarm, but to no avail. He tries to open the door next, but this also proves useless. They notice a CCTV camera and try to call for help, but they are not sure if anyone can see them. It also doesn't help that they have no cell service and it's a long weekend so they will probably be rescued on Tuesday morning. On top of that, Jennifer is desperate to get out because she has a flight to catch. With no choice, the two decide to wait until they get rescued. To pass the time, they get acquainted with one another. Jennifer shares that she's an account manager and Guy says that he is an accountant, but he's new. So he asks if the elevator has gotten stuck before. Jennifer says no and their conversation turns awkward, so they come to silence right after. 15 minutes later, Jennifer hops onto Guy's shoulders to look for an escape hatch on the ceiling. After trying for some time, she gives up as she cannot find one. Hour passes, Jennifer gives up on catching her flight. Overwhelmed, she curses out in anger and Guy agrees with everything she says to make her feel better. This makes Jennifer smile and they finally introduce themselves to each other. After this, they start to hit things off. Jennifer jokingly says that she is dying of thirst, so Guy offers her a water bottle. She hesitates at first but ends up drinking it anyway. After this, she gives Guy some chocolates to thank him. After a few hours, Jennifer feels the urge to urinate but does her best to hold it in. Guy tells her to do it on his coat but she refuses since it's embarrassing. Just then, Guy spots the empty thermos in her bag, so he suggests using it instead, although this is extremely humiliating for her. Jennifer does just that. As she does, Guy covers his ears so he cannot hear the noise coming from her. After this, Jennifer thanks Guy for not making the situation awkward. Realizing that she officially missed her flight, Jennifer decides to let the situation go and not dwell on it. Shortly after, she draws girl on the wall to accompany the boy stuck in the box. The two later pass the time by shooting chocolates into a cone. While they do this, Guy shares that he is in a complicated relationship with his job and nobody cares for him. He asks about her missed flight, so Jennifer shares that she was going to surprise her ex-fiancé who probably does not want to see her. Realizing that they are both going through a tough time, Guy decides to open the bottle of wine that he has been carrying. He wants to ease their woes and Jennifer gladly joins him. Later on, the two try to draw each other. While doing so, they hear a thump, but nobody responds from the outside. Jennifer groans in frustration and asks Guy what time it is, so he reveals that it is 1 am. After this, they go back to drawing and Guy tells Jennifer that he actually noticed her in the building before. He did not want to come off as stalker so he did not talk about it. Then he shares that he thought she was pretty and probably nice. Now that he finally met her, he can confirm that his thoughts were true. Jennifer smiles and thanks him for the compliments. After this, they show their drawings to each other. Jennifer playfully drew a funny picture of Guy with the bottle of wine, while Guy drew a pretty portrait of her. She's so impressed by it that she takes a photo and says she will make it her profile picture when they get out. She takes a few more selfies with Guy and asks what they should talk about next. Guy suggests sports, but Jennifer wants something interesting like past intimate escapades. 
while they share their stories. She suggests recording themselves. Jennifer goes first and shares that the weirdest place she did it in is the library. Guy goes next, but he does not have an experience as wild well as hers, so Jennifer tells him to create his story instead. He starts making up a story about getting intimate with a co-worker in his car after a work party, but he gets aroused by his own story and Jennifer notices. Guy apologizes, thinking that he might creep her out. However, Jennifer says it is okay, so he bluntly says, wants to kiss her. Jennifer does not protest, so Guy dives in for a kiss. Things get heated and the two copulate. They both have a good time, but after they do the deed, Guy blurts out that he is falling in love with her. This turns Jennifer off, so she quickly gets dressed. He asks her what's wrong, so she tells him that they are only casual because she still plans to go back to Derek. Guy tries to reason with her, saying that her ex does not deserve her and does not even want her back anyway. This triggers Jennifer, so she reminds him to remember his place. Pissed, she decides to forget everything that just happened after they get rescued. Jennifer tries to lighten up the situation and says that at least now, he finally has an interesting experience. However, Guy is still hurt by her rejection, so he decides to reveal everything. His real name isn't Guy, and he does not work as an accountant. In fact, he is the building security guard, which gave him easily access to stalk her. He even staged that situation they are in so that he could get closer to her. Realizing he cannot win her affections, Guy gives up and inserts the key to the elevator. It restarts and Jennifer releases a sigh of relief. However, she realizes the intensity of the situation so she hysterically screams at him saying he will root in jail for what he has done. Hearing this, Guy turns the elevator off, so Jennifer runs to turn it back on. As Guy tries to stop her, she accidentally kicks the key and destroys it trapping it off for real. Furious Jennifer beats him up with her boot. He falls to the ground, so she checks on him, thinking he might be dead. However, Guy opens his eyes and bangs Jennifer's head to the floor, knocking her out. Hours later, Jennifer wakes up, so Guy welcomes her back. She asks why he did this, so he explains that it is a good way to meet a girl and give her time to get to know him. Part of his plan, he prevented distraction like text messages so he could connect with her. He believes they actually achieved that, given they have been through an entire relationship inside the elevator. They met, talked, slept together, fought and broke up all in one room. Jennifer insists that he won't get away because someone will arrive. But Guy reveals that he convinced the other guards that he will take their shifts so that no one will be there until Tuesday. Now he decides that he would rather kill her than return to prison, catching her attention. Jennifer breaks down and calls him a monster, but he defends that he did not force her to do anything. She points out that he kidnapped her, so Guy rushes to her, cornering her while insisting that he did not kidnap her. He starts punching the walls, screaming that they had a connection, but she ruined everything after his outburst. Guy claims that he feels better, so he decides to open the paper bag that Jennifer's been carrying. He finds a tag revealing that it is supposed to be her gift to Derek. He takes the coat inside and wears it, seeing that it fits him too. Then he forces her to open the other gift, which is cigar set. Jennifer flinches as he flashes a lighter and sharp scissor on her face, so he yells for her to stop acting like he would hurt her. He starts smoking, even encouraging her to do so. Guy then comments that with all the nice gift prep she could have gotten Derek back. Later, Guy apologizes for lashing out earlier, excusing that he loses it when he gets mad. He promises that he does not want to scare her again, then asks for another chance. He starts complaining about the place, even smashing a light on the wall. Suddenly, he looks up at the ceiling and realizes that it does not have any screws, so he climbs the walls and bursts it open with a chance of getting out. He asks Jennifer to give him a boost so he can climb up and open the elevator from the outside. However, Jennifer manipulates him into letting her climb out instead, promising she won't call the cops when she gets on top of the cabin. 
she flips him off and leaves. Guy jumps up and down in anger while Jennifer makes her way up a ladder. As Jennifer tries to escape, Guy ties some cloths together, creating a makeshift rope. He manages to hook it up on the ceiling, allowing him to escape. He quickly catches up to Jennifer while she is trying the door open. However, he pulls her causing them to fall back into the elevator and lose consciousness. A few hours later, Jennifer is the first to recover and notices an exposed dripping pipe nearby. She burns Guy's drawing to trigger the smoke alarm. When he suddenly wakes up, Jennifer immediately kicks him in the face, allowing her to tie him up while he screams in agony. Just then, water sprinkles into the elevator, indicating that the smoke alarm was triggered and the fire department has been notified. Fight. Assuming that she now has the upper hand, Jennifer threatens him if he does not confess his crimes while being recorded. The helpless guy agrees to do this and this time he confesses everything. His real name is John Dickens and he used to be successful man with a stable job. However, it all went downhill when he killed someone. He reveals that his story about getting intimate with a co-worker in his car was true. He had been drunk and accidentally crashed the car killing the woman. After he got out of a six-month jail sentence, he could no longer land decent job. He became a security guard. He wanted a taste of his former life again. So he staged the elevator incident to experience a small break from his miserable life. Jennifer could only cry over how messed up his story was. Monday arrives and John's co-worker Eddie walks into the building with his girlfriend Ruby to take her to the roof. He looks for John but ends up seeing the footage from the elevator using the emergency communication. Eddie notifies Jennifer that he is there, thankful for the rescue. Jennifer waits for Eddie, unaware that John is untying his bindings. Shortly after, Eddie opens the door and gets greeted by Jennifer. The elevator is stuck just below the ceiling, making it unsafe for her to crawl out. However, as he prepares to get elevator down, John pulls Jennifer away, hearing John inside. Eddie tosses a key to him to override the elevator. However, John says it's not working, so he asks for help. As soon as Eddie gets half of his body inside, John turns the elevator on, chopping Eddie's body in half. Jennifer screams in horror, so John knocks her out. Shortly after, he puts Jennifer in his car trunk, then returns inside to get rid of the evidence and clean himself up. After this, he goes over the security footage and deletes everything. However, he gets interrupted by Ruby, who is looking for Eddie. Realizing that she is a witness, John decides to kill her too. Later on, he drives off and stops at an isolated area. He immediately puts kerosene in a dumpster where he plans to burn Jennifer's body. When he opens the trunk, he finds that she is already dead. He tosses her bags into the dumpster when Jennifer suddenly attacks him, knocking him down. She quickly gets into the car and drives off. However, she suddenly stops and puts the car in reverse to run over John. John quickly jumps into the dumpster to evade her, making her crash onto it instead. As she gets out of the car, Jennifer finds that John had gotten himself stabbed when he dove in, making him immobile. Pleased, she puffs cigar and looks at him with a cold stare. Before she gets into the car, she tosses the cigar into the dumpster, lighting it and John up in flames. 